Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel and the video where today we're going to be talking about my predictions for what's to come in the next 20 years of artificial intelligence research and commercially what's available. I'm actually really excited to talk about this because we've said we've seen such amazing changes in the past 20 years or really even less than the past 20 years, really the past 10 years where deep learning's really exploded that I'm personally really, and I think everyone really that knows about the field is really excited to see what's to come in the next 20 years. I think just kicking off, I want to talk about what is going or what we can really expect to see in the next first two years. Then from that, we'll go to five, 10 and 20 years. But starting with the first two years, I think we'll see more of unsurprisingly what we've seen in the past two years. And in the past two years, I've seen a huge focus on natural language process. Uh, natural language processing research or NLP for short, and that's things like generating text for chatbots or question answering, right? You give a question to an AI and it has to answer it, like a passage reading sort of thing, like think of the SAT or something. I think we'll see a lot more of that. That's been where a lot of the research is, and I think there's still a lot of milestones to hit. Right now, when we generate text, it is very, it can be very good if you look at models like GPT-3, which is something OpenAI released, I think over a year ago now, we can see text that is not quite indistinguishable from human text, but it can be very good in short form text at least, usually is as good as, as sort of the natural human text. So I think we'll see a GPT-4. It, it's been like a year since we've got GPT-3. And even if we don't get a new GPT model, which was the sort of last biggest model, so to say, for NLP, I do think we'll see at least a spiritual successor that will really be pushing the limits in terms of model sizes. Before GPT-3 was 175 billion neurons, or not neurons, but weights or parameters, which is pretty crazy considered uh, when you put that in like reference to the last models that were, you know, I think 10, 20, probably billion parameters at most previously, I, I think we'll be seeing a lot larger models. So in the coming two years, maybe even hitting a trillion parameters, two trillion parameters, that will be really exciting to see where like, you know, if these big models really do scale in terms of learning, right? Can we just stick on an extra 500 billion parameters and will it really learn super well? Because so far the trend has been, yeah, we, we, that's, that's been how it's been working. So I'm excited to see where that goes. The other thing I'm hoping to see in the next year is that models of the size of GPT-3 are hopefully open to the public. Right now, while GPT-3 has been open to people that sub sort of submit a request and get special permission, you have been able to have some access to it. We haven't seen any pre-trained models, so it's been impossible to run it on your own computer. That being said, it is a huge model in the first place, so you do need a little bit of capital to get it running. You'd probably have to use some cloud sources. But I am hoping to see you know just stronger models open and available to the public for use. In the next five years, moving on to the next time frame. I am thinking we'll probably see a lot more NLP work. There is other stuff in this video, but I just want to get over with the NLP stuff right now because it is a very exciting time for it. I think in the next five years, we'll really start to see long form text being generated and indistinguishable from humans. Right now, if you were to try and generate an article, you'd probably get something okay, but it's still usually a bit nonsensical. You know, it doesn't really, it's not always logical. Those I think are things that we'll start to fix. I'm not sure we'll be to the point where we can generate entire novels based on, you know, with just an AI model within the next five years at least, but I do think that we'll be a lot more competent when it comes to long form text, and that's something I'm very excited to see. I think, and finally moving away from NLP here, I think the next thing we'll start to see in the next five years is along with the rise of self-driving technology, which has been, you know, pretty, pretty good as of late. I think originally the predictions were that we would have full self-driving by like 2020 and the, there were all these crazy claims. We're definitely a bit behind on that, but that doesn't mean that it's dead by any means. The technology is growing at a good pace, a steady pace, albeit a little bit slow. But I expect to see a lot more talk around regulations, sort of, I guess, legalizing it in lots of countries and states. I'm from the US and here right now, I think only in three or four states or something along those lines is actually legalized. And even then there might be some stipulations, I'm not sure. But I'm, I expect that there will probably be a lot more pressure from these organizations like Tesla, like Google, like these other companies that are developing these cars. I expect they'll be pressuring legislators more to, to pass these laws so that they can actually start expanding the marketplace where they can actually sell these. That's about what I expect in the five year time span. There will be other things, but those are probably the most noteworthy. Now, that's maybe not too exciting too far, somewhat exciting, but I think 10 years is the time span where we will really start to see some pretty crazy things happening. I think for one, just sticking on the topic of self-driving, I think we'll start to see a push for legalization within the next five years, but I think within the next 10 years, 
We'll probably see it legalized around lots of the world, in lots of the states at least, and we'll probably start to see that huge dip in driving numbers or, well, driving job numbers or trucking jobs, things of that sort that has sort of been warned about for a while now. I think it's a little bit late to maybe what people were originally predicting, but but I think it's definitely coming and that's probably around the time frame we'll, where we will start seeing that. The next thing is something I'm super excited for, and that is the use case of AI in neural device systems. So think of Neuralink as, as a huge example right now, right? They're doing invasive implantation of these neural devices to help with things like, I guess, neurological afflictions. And I think we'll start to see the results of that within 10 years. Definitely, or probably not opened up to the public at that point, but we'll probably have lots of papers out, lots of research and data on it. And that's probably when I think they'll start to consider opening this up to a more wider audience, not for like recreational purposes probably yet, but still for like people that, you know, want to be able to control limbs or people that have, uh, I, I don't want to go too much into this because I'm not a medical professional, I'm an AI person, but I think we'll at least start to see a lot of movement there. And that's super exciting to think about that that will really be having hopefully a great effect on people's lives by then. In terms of back to sort of core AI, Model size is one thing that I think will really explode within the coming years. I mean, within the next 10 years, I'm thinking we might see models sort of on the order of magnitude that we see for like neurons in the human brain. The most recent GPT-3 model was I think 175 billion parameters. I know there are roughly 80 trillion neurons in the human brain. Now, t keep in mind that's not an apples to apples comparison because neurons are not the same as like calculations or synapses. There's actually a lot more synapses in the human brain. I think it's uh, whatever the order of magnitude up from a trillion is or a couple order of magnitudes up, several, I think. Um, so, so that's not an apples to apples comparison, but I think we will get a lot closer to that level that the human brain has. And it will be really exciting to see if these things just keep scaling, even when we get to that many you know, synapses, or whether or not we'll have to sort of have new types of technologies to be able to enable that sort of vast computing. Once we get to that point, I think that is where AI will really take off in terms of being able to do lots of creative work that humans you know, spend a lot of time doing. And in that regard, I think AI will become a sort of assistant tool to a lot of creatives for things like generating artwork or generating books or, or even making video games, we'll probably have AI that will automate lots of these tasks like generating assets, coming up with ideas, writing some of these passages. I think it will be used a lot in that sort of way to speed up the works of not just unskilled labor, but also this creative labor. And it will be really interesting to see how that comes to play. Even nowadays, we already have like AI generated art, right? And some of it's really neat. I actually have a video about that coming up soon. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing that type of content. But as I said, as we get these huge models, we'll not only see better models that can work for more creative sort of avenues, I think we'll also see a shift in research, right? Once we've solved essentially NLP and computer vision, we'll probably move into things like neuromorphic computing to make sure that we can support uh, these huge models. And neuromorphic computing is computing that is supposed to behave more like a, a neural system. I don't know the details of it, but it's essentially hardware that is specific to AI, right? Right now we have, first we had GPUs, now we have TPUs. It will be exciting to see what the next step up from there is and how that will enable us to build these vast models that will be used in all sorts of applications, I'm sure. I think we'll also see a larger shift to work on reinforcement learning, specifically general tasks within reinforcement learning. RL is a field that is used for things like self-driving cars and essentially goal-based systems. And up till now, there has been a lot of research in the past couple of years, but I'm expecting to see a lot more general research. Essentially, you give it some goal, a general goal, and it can solve a bunch of different tasks as opposed to just playing this one game, which are what lots of RL agents right now can do. And then the last thing I expect to see in the next 10 years is still a shift in research, less towards these very minuscule like uh, sort of model architectures like attention and stuff, and more towards macro building of architectures. So taking an NLP model and combining it with a uh, computer vision model, that's already something that's happening, that's multimodal research, but maybe combining sort of these on a larger scale, maybe combining top, well, like five different types of models and adding like some sort of memory storage component. Again, memory storage is something that's been looked into, but we haven't done it on this big scale yet. And as we scale these systems, that will be something that's a lot more doable 
it will probably be essential when we want to create these much more general models. And that is something I, I, I keep saying I'm excited to see how these things go, but that is truly one of the things that I think will revolutionize the field the most once we really get all the low level details down and we start working on the more higher concepts and putting things together that can perform general tasks, that's when we can really start thinking about things like artificial general intelligence. And moving on to the last time frame, the next 20 years, I'm really, you know, it's, it's hard to predict out to this sort of length, but within the next 20 years, I think we'll really be building on what I talked about will happen in the next 10 years. We'll shift to building these huge like multi-model architectures and with those multi-model architectures, I think we'll probably start to develop software that can do really, really any rote tasks, maybe not highly skilled tasks, but anything like maybe we'll, there will be commercial products or sort of assistance. I think, for example, Alexa and Google Assistant, there will be a lot more assistants that have a new breath of life sort of pushed into them by these inventions that will essentially allow you to tell your assistant to go write you an email or go make a call. There are sort of assistants that do that thing right now, but the difference will be that we won't have to train on all these minuscule tasks, meaning that it takes a lot of capital and all these things to do this. We'll probably just train one model to do a bunch of things, and we'll probably be a lot more data efficient at that point and be able to do things a lot more accurately and a lot more trustworthy. So I expect these tools to become super regular. Uh, or at least super widespread so that people you will probably see people using these tools everywhere and assistance will probably you know AI assistance will probably become a really common tool everywhere in the world and the last thing I expect to happen in the next 20 years is really legal reg you know legal sort of limitations and regulations being passed I think this is that's really the point you know where you have all these assistants and people are really you know even though AI is already sort of prevalent in lots of people's lives I think it will not only be prevalent in the next 20 years but prevalent to the point where it will be like oh my gosh I'm talking to an AI every day now right now it's like maybe some things I use or some systems I use use AI on a level right like you say to Siri something every once in a while and it's like oh, okay it made a, a calendar you know it scheduled a calendar something on my calendar I think it will really get to the point where it's like oh, okay, I just ask it to do anything other than like, you know, some super complicated task and it can really um, start to do this now. That's kind of crazy. Maybe we should stop or stop going so fast and start thinking about limiting these things. Anyway, that is it for my projections in the next sort of 20 years. I do have another video coming up for my guesses in the next 100 years. If you're curious in seeing that, things like artificial general intelligence, more things like full dive, virtual reality, immortality, a bit crazy to say those things, but those are some of the things my next video will talk about a bit more out there. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment if you thought I left anything out. There are lots of things I, you know, can't touch on because I don't know that much about everything. Um, you know, one example of that would be medical devices. I think personalized medicine is another area where we will probably see a lot more cool stuff, but I, I don't know really enough about it to talk about it. So yeah, it's super interesting though. So if you're interested in seeing that kind of content, subscribe to the channel and I hope to catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching.